As you know, Barnaby Joyce will be challenging to return to the Deputy Prime Ministership of Australia. He shall do so tomorrow at a National Party meeting, this meeting that is going to take place in Canberra. This is one hell of a move from where the day started. Now, we may well now have an indication as to why it took so freaking long to get rid of Bridget McKenzie. Because once Bridget McKenzie was gone, it would automatically trigger a party room vote for the deputy's job. And it was pretty obvious that Barnaby Joyce thought those seemed like the right conditions to ask for another vote of the party room. Well, it was all only about the deputy this morning and Michael McCormick thought... I'm fine. He was like the footy coach being backed in by the board for the rest of the season. Barnaby Joyce has said that he will stand if there is a spill called. No spill has been called and, uh, and I'm not expecting the one to be. Well, I'm sure Barnaby is ready to be the leader of the party should there be a, a, a spill called, but there has been no spill called. Uh, there is no vacancy for the leadership position. I am the leader of the party. I have the party support. <laughs> um... Clearly, the move was on and people were ready to jump. So this afternoon, Andrew Clonell had the exclusive interview with Barnaby Joyce where he confirmed that, uh, well, he's not going to wait. He's not going to wait for McCormick to resign or things to get worse. He's going to come straight at him, balls and all. Do you think you have the numbers to win? Well, uh, I've informed Mr McCormick that I'll be standing against him. Uh, really, that's up for the colleagues. Uh, you, you can't just sit back and say, you know, I wish things were... were better. Lou O'Brien, is he the one who'll move it? Uh, look, they'll be moved and, and seconded. Some MPs are saying you might only get five or six votes. Do you think that's possible? Uh, well, look, I'm, I'm going to leave that up to you know the colleagues. I'm not going to start saying. I don't think anybody ever knows. Mr Morrison uh, talks about the quiet Australians. Uh, in regional areas, we have the near invisible ones. Uh, we have them living in the weatherboard and iron. And we have to make sure that we're not a mere shadow of another party, that we speak with our own voice. The conventional wisdom among the bubble set was that this was a, a frolic that was going to result in maybe four, five, perhaps half a dozen people voting for Barnaby Joyce. The vast majority were going to back in the current arrangements. And then that sound you heard just after seven o'clock was the thunderclap of Matt Canavan, the bloke who was absolutely instrumental in the LNP being able to push back Labor as hard as they did in Queensland. Well, he didn't just say that he was going to be voting for Barnaby Joyce tomorrow, but instead he has said that he is resigning from the Cabinet, resigning from ministerial service under Michael McCormick as Deputy Prime Minister, and he was on with Andrew Bolt a bit earlier this evening on Sky News on Foxtel. Uh, the Nationals Party, and particularly the people who support us, the farmers, miners, people who just want a job in regional Australia, uh, that they'll be best served by a change of leadership uh, to Barnaby Joyce. Uh, so I'll be backing Barnaby tomorrow. And, and because of that, um, I need to do the right thing. And, and as a member of Michael McCormack's team, offer my resignation. So I've done that this evening. For those of you watching on Sky News on Win, you can see it in full in about an hour's time. For those who missed it, go to skynews.com.au. So here we are where those who uh, know things a little more intimately than I say it's one or two votes this way or that way. For those that have been through leadership contests before, both on the ascendancy or your leadership being eaten away, that means who knows. But for my sense, it's time to bring back Barnaby. Barnaby Joyce is the politician who understands regional Australia, but most importantly, he's the one who can be seen to be fighting for it. One of the reasons why he is an incredibly effective representative of regional Australia is because the woke kids hate him. And if it'll upset a Green, if it'll get the Guardian going troppo, it must be the right thing for normal Australians. Now, if he is unsuccessful in his leadership tilt tomorrow, I still think he should form a major part of the government going forward. We currently have a gap in the agriculture ministry. That was what Bridget McKenzie had as a job. I would move David Littleproud back into that position and then the process of water and that ministry should be given to Barnaby Joyce and be he Deputy Prime Minister or just a upset person who wants to be Deputy Prime Minister. He should have one job above anything else, building a bloody dam. Pick a spot, any spot, somewhere in Australia and get it done in the two and a bit years that exist before the next election. Because there has been an awful lot of gum flapping from the Nats for a very long time about what they're going to do specifically when it comes to things like power and water.
The coal fire power argument is one where you know where I stand. But I think it's going to be, ironically, easier to build a dam in Australia than a coal fire power station. That should be what Barnaby Joyce has his job at the very least by this time tomorrow night. We wait, we see, we watch full coverage as it all unfolds tomorrow. It wasn't the only leadership change, though. Uh, Bob Catter has handed over to Robbie Catter as the person in charge of Catter's Australia Party. Now, does that mean that Robbie will be standing at the Queensland election or holding off to the next federal election? No. He will be running in Queensland, and then what happens federally we'll see in a couple of years' time. 